Nobody knows these men's faces. They are members of Bulgaria's special counter-terrorism unit, the SOBT. It took Euronews several months to obtain permission to enter this top-secret training ground in the suburbs of Sofia. Earlier this year, Bulgaria was slammed by the EU in a highly critical report. It said organized crime in Bulgaria was unique compared to other EU nations because it exercises a deep influence over the country's economy. Kidnappings, contract killings, sex, drugs and cigarette trafficking. Bulgarian gangs are highly organized and well connected, both to shady Bulgarian businessmen and to fellow criminals around the world. Kiro Kirov has experienced the Bulgarian Mafia firsthand. An entrepreneur who made big money importing construction machinery, he was kidnapped by a gang a few years ago. He was held in violent conditions for 17 days until his son paid the half million euro ransom. The kidnappers used a jeep, a big car. Their faces were covered. They took me by force. One gangster drove the jeep while the other was violently beating me. I tried to get out of the car. I tried to smash the jeep's window, but to no avail. I was brought to a tiny room. You wouldn't call it a room. It was so small. It was two meters by one and a half, and you couldn't stand up straight. There was a mattress and I was handcuffed against the wall. Sharing a moment with his pet bird Coco, Kirov thinks twice before answering our question, does he feel safe today in Bulgaria? The SOBT unit does a great job, he says, but more needs to be done on other levels to eradicate organized crime. Many mistakes are being made, everywhere. Often criminals are arrested but set free by judges the very next day. Then they shoot each other or go on to commit more crime. Something's not working here in Bulgaria. The state should do a better job of protecting its citizens. According to Kirov, the police, investigators and prosecutors need to work more closely together. An opinion shared by experts. The problem is not the SOBT, who are perfectly well trained, according to socialist opposition leader and former Prime Minister Sergei Stanishev. He says the government is responsible for staging events in order to impress voters ahead of elections. The uh, Minister of Interior proudly announced that they have destroyed 660 organized criminal groups. But this is actually the small fish. The next day, uh, the European Commission mentioned in the report that there are 12 big organized criminal groups who are apparently functioning quite successfully in Bulgaria with an annual turnover of billions. The government is good in that. I mean, actions, you know, arresting some people, accusing them. But if you don't, if you don't have the results in court, if you don't have enough evidence, if you don't have efficiency, it's more, it's more like a PR action because uh, the priority for this government is how it looks. It's not just the EU which is tired of waiting for results. Tador Kolarov resigned in February as head of Bulgaria's anti-mafia agency. He stepped down in protest at what he saw as a lack of political will to combat high-level corruption. What's needed, he says, is confiscations. This is a, a tool to prevent crimes from happening. If you go after big fish and you're successful against the big fish, the small fish will think twice. If you leave organized crime and just believe that it will disappear, that it will um, become part of the white business, that is not going to happen. And when you decide to effectively combat it, you may actually unleash civil war in your own country. The challenge is to clean up the judiciary and appoint corruption-free judges and prosecutors, according to Bulgaria's new justice minister. Diana Kovacheva is the former head of the Bulgarian branch of Transparency International. She is introducing new confiscation law.
perpetrators of serious crimes like organized crime and corruption will not be able to reinvest the funds taken from such serious crimes because they will be confiscated. And this is a totally new approach in European terms as well, where these funds and these assets will be confiscated um, on the non-conviction based principle, meaning that this would be a civil procedure without conviction and all the assets that cannot be proven in terms of origin will be confiscated. It's easy to find Bulgarian gangsters if they're dead. Just take a stroll through Sofia's main cemetery and look for the most ostentatious tombstones. After the fall of communism, Bulgaria went through a very brutal transition period, which set the standard. Shootouts were rife. Big fish were murdered, leaving room for the then small fish to grow. Over the past decade, Bulgaria has seen 150 contract killings, most of them remain unsolved. Nanka Kaleva's husband, a prosecutor, was shot dead a decade ago. She's convinced he was killed because he had found evidence against people in high positions. No one's ever been found guilty of his murder. The case has since been reopened by the European Court of Human Rights, which condemned Bulgaria for not properly investigating it. It was just a normal evening. We'd invited some friends over. My husband went out to buy a few things. He should never have gone out. Everybody knows who the criminals were who did it. But the police kept the secret. The killers are former members of the special forces. Bulgaria recently inaugurated its special anti-mafia court. Sofia knows that without real progress in tackling organized crime and high-level corruption, the economically vital entry into the Schengen area will remain closed. The head of the court, Georgi Ushev, is optimistic. Bulgaria needs this special anti-mafia court to try cases against organized crime, which until now were treated in regional courts, which are very, very slow. Several big fish are currently on trial. So I don't agree with people who say we only attack small fish. As Bulgaria beefs up its fight against organized crime, what the European Commission is looking for is results before it authorizes entry into the Schengen zone. For now, the question has been postponed at least until the end of next year.